Hi guys, Darkside Racing, Nitro Nick, back here for another Top Fuel tutorial, and as I promised you guys, we're going to be talking about the clutch. And there she is. She a beauty, ain't he? She, eh, whatever. It. So, today's discussion is going to be a brief overview of exactly what the clutch is, what it does on our car, and the components that are involved with it. The next video, I'm going to be going much more in depth about tuning it, how to get it to do what you want, a little bit about the mathematics behind it, and... Well, I'll see what else I can fit in there to keep you guys entertained and hopefully inform you. Let's get on with it. All right, so here we have the clutch assembled in the back of our car. As you see, we got a couple components here. We got some what we call adjustable spacers, adjustable stands. There's a bunch of different names for them, but the main point is what they do is allow you to adjust how tight this this piece and this piece are together and I'll go over that explain that in the next video adjust how these press against the discs and the floaters you see we got a bunch of nuts torqued down to the stands we got some springs it's called hold off springs we got a bunch of little levers these levers are called arms and as you can see there is some nuts on them those nuts are weights for the description of anything involving the clutch. We have our input shaft, and well, that's pretty much everything that you can see here. Now, what I have over here is what it should look like when all that's buttoned up. We got a titanium bell housing, we got a cannon, we got a reverser, and all that connects to the rear end with our coupler. Just like that. So now, how do all these things work together? Well, first off, you got a flywheel. It's bolted in to the back of the crank. You got a bearing in the middle here to hold the input shaft. And you got a bunch of little plates here. Those plates are hardened steel and with these grooves, they're designed to cut into the clutch discs. Now, this is a clutch disc. Key things to know about the clutch disc is, you can see, there's kind of two different materials it looks like here. Some very hard, solid steel, and then something a little bit more granular, like a uh, cruddy cement. Well, what that stuff is, is called sintered iron. Take a bunch of iron powder, iron fragments, around a whole bunch of these steel discs, press them down as hard as you can, add some liquid nickel, copper, and zinc into the material, and you got yourself what's called a clutch disc. Now, generally with the discs, they are measured for their hardness on the most hardness scale. There is a important thing to consider with top fuel clutch discs and that is the fact that the copper, nickel, and zinc is in there, the chemical makeup. Now, unfortunately, the last two years ago, we found this out the hard way. The clutch discs that you're looking for on a top fuel dragster has three rows of rivets. These are ones that have those, the molecular components in there that allow them to slip. If you don't have that molecular structure in there, these discs aren't going to slip. They're going to grab right away. And the reason we want it to slip is that when you're making a pass down the track, you want to slowly apply the torque of the motor to the back tires. If you don't do that slowly enough, and I'm talking about a matter of milliseconds, remember, you're going to break free of the track and you're going to lose a race. Or if you apply it too quickly, but you do keep grip of the track, you're actually gonna start really overworking the engine and you're gonna do what's called torching ahead. All of it is bad damage and if you torch ahead, really messy. That's something to keep in mind with the discs. Now, we got one more piece here. This is called a floater. Very similar design as the flywheel, except these fit in between discs. Now, if we go over to our car, we have what's called a five disc clutch. We have five discs and three floaters in there. Pro teams have gone up to six discs and that allows them to 
apply the force from the motor to the back tires more efficiently. Same grooves in here allow you to grab and cut the actual disc. And that's about that for those. So now, talk about how all that works together. So, when I said that these stands adjust the hat, we have what's called an air gap or a pack clearance. Both are the same sort of, they're the exact same thing. You don't want these touching right away. Because when you turn the car on, if they're touching, you got zero clearance, that means that the motor is in gear and the wheels are gonna turn. So it's actually gonna throw people off the car, could, could hurt someone. Now, the reason why it's such a noticeable clearance is that as everything in here is spinning, you got, I don't know if I can turn this for you. No, we just put the pistons in so they're a little, everything's a little tight and the blower is attached too. So as the flywheel is moving, the floaters are wrapped around the flywheel. You can kind of see by their little arms, they move one with the flywheel. The discs move on their own. And as all that is moving, heat is slowly being built up. So you want to make sure that you compensate for the little bit of heat that is created so that the driver has control of the car. Because once these start warming up too much, the driver is actually getting him into a dangerous spot where he's going to slowly lose control of the car because they're grabbing. I will talk about how the stands work in the next video about the clutch. I'll go a lot more in detail about the pressure plate, the hat that sits on top, how the stands work, and how to tune a clutch. So the next piece to talk about over here is we got what's called a cannon. So now this cannon is essentially a giant hydraulic piston. This piece here, you can see, will sit inside the bell housing. We have a release bearing. That may have just appeared. You have no idea. Now, this release bearing sits inside the cannon and you can see it restricts it. So as the cannon goes in, the release bearing will go in. And how that works, if I go over here, as it does is restricts how many arms deploy. And I'll go into more discussion about that in the next video. Now this little tab up here, we use it for what's called a linear sensor. That's this bad boy right here. And as you can see, the sensor, as it moves, it's gonna tell us where it's at. And we use that information to tune our clutch in other ways. Then, the back of the cannon will sit the reverser. A little bit nicer than that, but I think you kind of get the mental idea. Ugh. The reversers that we are required to use by NHRA has two modes. Forward, one-to-one. -one. Reverse, which can just barely take a few horsepower. It's a planetary system, and I'll explain that in the next video. And it is aluminum, so if the driver were to accidentally rev the motor while it's in reverse, you, you won't have a reverser anymore. And then, by NHRA rules, you have third position. By pulling this, you take the entire reverser into a neutral. After a run, the amount of heat that's built up in the clutch, these discs and floaters and flywheel and hats are all probably fused together. It doesn't always happen, but it's a majority of the time it does happen. And so when they go to push you off the track, they're not just pushing a rear end that you can turn by hand. See, it's a little sticky, but you can turn it by hand. You're pushing the entire motor that's the belt from the crank up to the blower. The blower is a nice tight blower. Usually you can't even turn that by hand. So the neutral is designed for the safety crews to come and push you off so that the race can keep going because everyone wants to race. No one likes waiting.
I think that genuinely covers it for the overview of the clutch. I'm going to go into more detail about the hat, how it's constructed, how the arms work, a little bit about the mathematics behind the arms. I'm going to go into detail about tuning a clutch, how far you want to set the arms off, sorry, not the arms, the adjustable stands, how to even use them, how to look at them, and read what they're trying to tell you, and then explain with the cannon, oh, I just forgot to show you guys how to tune the cannon. And that is with that right down there. Yeah, I bet you have no idea what that is, and you'll be finding out next video. I can tell you that it essentially is a bunch of pressure valves that you use to adjust the flow of hydraulic fluid into the back of the cannon. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Again, there's going to be a couple of odd videos. I don't have my camera person with me, so running it off the bat like this is definitely an interesting challenge. But please remember to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. As always, I want your feedback. Any sort of topics you guys are interested about, I might actually dive into that after the clutch. Remember, we have the fuel management system coming up after this string of videos. It's going to be a little bit, a lot of information there, but stay tuned for it. As far as I can tell around here, I think I covered the basics of the clutch, so stay tuned. We're going to be talking pretty in-depth. Take care.